up guys, Rare Spark here and I'm coming at you with Spark at the Park, episode 62. That's right, and we're playing with King Dooms, Prophecy, and uh, I believe two randoms. I apologize if I missed missed you, but uh, I believe we're playing with two randoms along with me, King Dooms, and Prophecy. So Red Ink is another random, and so is Mr. Magic, but they were not bad at all. So as you see, I'm trying to set up Dooms for the Spacky, as he says. But he can't knock down the corner three to start off the game. Tough miss, but uh, a good setup on my part. But uh, first thing I wanted to talk about is, do you like that I'm bringing back the Tracy McGrady series? I really want to know this. I had noticed looking back at my videos, T-Mac was like the second highest viewed video um, aside from Spark at the Park. So I wanted to like bring that back and hopefully start continuing up the series right before 2K15 comes out. And uh, obviously we're about four months away, so well actually less than that now, three months away till NBA 2K15. So everybody should be getting hyped, and uh, I'm very very excited for NBA 2K15. If you guys didn't see it today, I believe there's going to be a live stream later today. I'm not 100% sure on the time. I think it might be 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 8 p.m. Eastern Time, but I could be wrong, so make sure you check LD2K's Twitter. As you see, a nice block there from Big Bucks got me off the glass. But um, basically, uh, yeah. So there might be a live stream, and they're probably going to talk about NBA 2K15 and all the details and stuff like that. So it should be interesting. Very excited for it, and uh, hopefully we get some leaked little bit of info from LD2K and Ronnie2K. We'll have to see how things shake out. But um, yeah, this was a good overall game. Just a dominant performance from my squad, as you'll see in this game. As you see, Prophecy knocking down the three-pointer. Dude's a beast. And uh, I just enjoy playing with Dooms and Prophecy and all the guys in our squad because they just know how to move the ball, play defense. And playing next to Dooms is probably my favorite thing to do because if I know if I don't get the block at the paint, he'll be there to get the block. And you'll see a few times I missed a block in this game and Dooms comes flying in and gets it for himself. So playing with Dooms is a lot of fun. And he's just a great defender and obviously a great player overall. Just like slamming it down with the jam. And it's uh, four, 4 to 1, so we're starting off pretty well. And uh, shout out to my boys, CL Pride and Jeff, aka Based. I don't know if they're going to see this, but if they do, we were talking a little smack last night on Twitter. Just They, were, they tweeted out, like, we're the best squad on 2K Parks, man. And I was like, nah, man, come play us. But unfortunately, they're on the Xbox One, so... I believe Dooms and um, probably just Shakedown only have an Xbox One right now. And I don't think either. I think Dooms has it for the Xbox uh, to NBA 2K14, that is. But I don't think Shakedown does. So, unfortunately, there's no real way to set up a match between us two. So, I don't think it's something that 2K is looking at either. I think it's almost impossible to just set up a game like that. But it'd be cool if 2K brought in a feature where you can play people from separate consoles or something like that. But I don't see it happening. But it'd be nice, because I would love to play against the, uh, Jeff, a.k.a. Based, and CL Pride. We used to play with each other back in uh, 2K14 crew, cruise mode, and uh, also back in 2K13 on the blacktop. So, missed those dudes, but, uh, you know, we decided to go separate ways with the separate consoles. So, uh, hopefully when I decide to get my Xbox One in the future, not anytime very soon or anything like that, that... Uh, Maybe I'll, I'm trying to wait it out for a smaller console, so like a smaller version of the Xbox One that they always seem to come out with, a smaller version of the 360 and everything like that, so hopefully I can wait it out. If not, I'll probably get it within a year or a year and a half, maybe. It depends on the Black Friday deals as well. Maybe there's a good Black Friday deal coming at the end of the year. Save up my money and just buy it, but we'll have to see. So uh, as you see, Big Bucks got the ball, trying to play some good defense on him. And uh, I've learned to basically stand still on defense. Now, I know that's going to sound funny, but a lot of the time when people make dribble moves, if you're not going left and right with them, like, you know, back and forth with their dribble moves, then if you stand still, a lot of the times they'll end up dribbling right into you and getting stopped anyway. So Dooms with a beautiful setup. My jumper was not on in this game at all. It was just way off. And if you saw the last game, my jumper was on for most most of the game. But... This game was just not happening. I couldn't knock 
knocked down any jumpers. We're going against Varelli in this one. You saw him on our team in the last game against those steel spamming cheesers. So definitely go check that out. Episode 61. It's a very good game. We're up against these crazy steel spammers and we end up pulling out the win. And uh, it's a very enjoyable game. So definitely go check out Spark at the Park episode 61 if you have not already. So I'm trying to post up bucks. I get right by him. Slam it home. Uh, you know, trying to use my size to my advantage against Big Bucks. He's a point guard, so he's obviously going to use his speed and dribble ability against me, but try and take advantage of it in the inside of the paint. So they get a nice look from downtown. I believe that was. Could have been a maybe foot on line, but it's 7 to 9 regardless. Red Ink running the offense. Gets fouled here by the guy in the OKC Thunder jersey. And uh, what do you guys think of the draft? That's one thing I wanted to bring up as well. Now, personally, my Knicks. I think they did a great job today in the draft. Obviously, they pulled off the trade to get Tyson Chandler and Raymond Felton off the team. Now, I like Tyson Chandler, but last year he was straight-up garbage. He did not defend the rim at all like he was supposed to. He did not look like the former defensive player of the year. He played almost as much defense as Amari Stoudemire, and Amari Stoudemire plays none. So that should tell you how much Tyson Chandler played. So Tyson Chandler did not look good last year, so I'm hoping that... Uh, doesn't come to back to bite us but I'm not too worried in today's NBA a big center is not all that important I mean Tim Duncan is a great center and he won the championship obviously but it's you know it's not that important to have some crazy center and we actually picked up a very good quality point guard in Jose Calderon which is nice because we obviously haven't had a very good point guard in the last five years or so when last you know Raymond Felton back in the day was decent when he uh, first signed with us but last year and this year he was garbage and he could not run an offense to save his life and that forced Melo to a lot of the times you know force and make his own offense because of that because Melo couldn't be set up by anything for Raymond Felton so Jose Calderon will look to run the offense and I'm very excited to see him in the triangle offense I love the moves that Phil Jackson has made so far very excited it very definitely looks like there's a new regime in the New York Knicks uh, front office like I don't see a touch of anything that the former GMs used to do or anything like that it seems like Dolan's finally had enough said, I'm keeping my hands off this one you know Dolan is the owner of the Knicks that always seems to fickle in during important parts of trades and stuff like that like he'll force a trade like I believe he forced the trade to Melo uh, to get Melo to the Knicks back in the day when you know GM at the time Donnie Walsh wanted to wait it out and see if he can get him in free agency and uh, obviously it did not work out so we ended up getting Melo and uh, kind of handicapped our team that first year especially because we lost a lot of our good role players in Danilo Gallinari, Wilson Chandler and uh, other players but again just uh, looks like he's gonna keep his hands off hopefully at least for the time being and we'll see what Phil Jackson does with the Knicks squad he's not done making moves I'm pretty sure because we have a glut at the small forward shooting guard position we've got four shooting guards we've got like two other uh, small forwards who can be shooting guards because they're only 6'6 and 6'5 so we really need to start moving players so I think you're gonna see a lot of moves from the Knicks coming up I don't know if they're gonna make enough moves to possibly get LeBron or anything like that but I'm not too worried about that I'm kinda in the mental state that the Knicks are in a rebuild already so I'm not looking to win right now or anything like that I'm just excited to watch our young players grow and see what they do but anyways um, just wanted to talk about the draft so if you wanna respond in the comments let me know what you guys thought of the draft I'll respond with my own feelings if you wanna ask me questions about the draft I'll respond how I feel about certain things and certain picks and whatnot but uh, other than that I'm leaving those comments up to you guys I will respond so back into the gameplay now as you see we have been kicking their butts all game it's 13 to 17 now nice adjustment by Redding to get that bucket to go and now it's 13 18 we're in the driver's seat we're leading this game and it looks like we're going to continue to win this game so now Ferelli's bringing the ball up. He gets stripped by Red Ink. Now, obviously, he's a random. We don't condone steel spamming. Not that he was steel spamming all game, but he was pretty heavy on the square button towards the end. 
But uh, I'm flopping because I'm trying to get in Big Buck's head. He's a dude that can get very heated very quickly. So I'm trying to get him angry a little bit by flopping in front of him. But uh, just saying, haha, we're winning. <laughs> just messing with him a little bit. So uh, the ball goes out of bounds off that jump shot. And it's going to be our ball. So Prophecy's handing it in to Doom. Dooms is bringing it up. We always have Dooms run the offense if Shake or uh, one of our other point guards isn't in because Dooms is a very good facilitator. He'll set up guys. And he doesn't need to pick one specific person to set up kind of like some point guards do need to do on 2K I'm talking about. On 2K it seems like certain point guards or certain people that try to run the point, they'll already have a mindset of who they're going to pass it to before they even bring up the ball up the court and then they'll just stare that guy down until they make the play. So... Dooms is a guy that if you're moving, he'll find you. Doesn't matter who you are, he'll keep moving the ball, and that's that's what I like about Dooms when he runs the offense. So, a little glitch here on the prophecy inbound, but it doesn't cost us a bucket. Nice alley oop to end the game from the two randoms, and you know we gotta end it with that oop 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 on Gundam style. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Spark at the Park. I'll see you guys later. Rare Spark out.